Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the shed. I'm Lonnie. Hey, I'm Candace. Welcome back. Well, it's the day after uh, June 19th, and that would be June 20th for those of you. <laughs> well, I'm telling that because the post, the mail carrier didn't run yet. Oh, you mean the day after Juneteenth? Juneteenth, yes. So, what is um, the day after Juneteenth? June 28th, 20th, 20th. So we got probably about half the packages yesterday, right? A little, no a little more. more. Yeah. We we we. We just pulled all the smaller, easier to pack USPS stuff. Yeah. I think that's like 26 packages. And um, we have we have a pretty good bit more like larger, uh, like more expensive stuff, I guess. Yeah, we have some more things to, uh, and also three things on Macari that we need to get out too. So okay. um, we're gonna go ahead and get started with that. First thing we need to do is bag this stuff up. Yes. All right, got that stuff bagged up, ready to put it out for our carrier. We're going to have at least one more um, IKEA bag today. All right, first item on 10 Bravo, some floor mats, Toyota Tacoma. Yep, these right here, I have a few more to list. We got these from the original Kevin Ding y'all buy. And they, I was shocked. Well, I wasn't uh, shocked. I mean, I knew they were worth something, but... They were all like new. We were trying to figure out like why did someone have that many different styles of new. I think it was maybe a dealership that they had custom add-ons or something like that. I don't know. It could have been. Or yeah. it could have been like an accessory shop that sold, um, what's that brand? Oh, um, WeatherTech. The, WeatherTech, yeah. The, yeah, the molded but, stuff, yeah. Who knows? But they had like, I think we had like six sets of floor mats. Mm-hmm. All right, the next um, item is a Nintendo 64 on 5 Alpha. Uh, it's all the way at the bottom. We have a SNES and a Wii Mini here too. Is the SNES going out as well? All right, both of these are going out. Maybe, may or may not be using the boxes they're currently in. Pretty good chance that I'm not. You can go ahead and set that one on the bench. And then just set this one off to the side. And here is that N64. Okay. And the Wii Mini is not sold yet, I don't think. All right. All right, the N64 also bought some games. Alright, the N64 sold for 100 and he also bought some games, so let me find those so we can have those all together. Okay. Alright, two of them are in the chest drawer, Super Mario 64 and GoldenEye 007. Okay, Super Mario 64, GoldenEye, and then I think he also bought Donkey Kong, yep, huh? Yep, it's in the guy drawer. Guy drawer? Yep, it's the yellow one. Yep. Those three games together sold for $92.97. Yep, that's three uh, three good titles for sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also, I already pulled the SNES. Yep, that one sold for one twenty. Alrighty. In the Digimon drawer, Super Mario World. With manual, right? Yes. Okay. That sold for twenty six. On ten Alpha, we sold a GameCube. Okay. All right, we have. Okay, this needs to just get set off to the side. And this is top loader. Yep, we sold the top loader and the GameCube. And then this is the GameCube. Okay. All the stuff I listed over the weekend. All right, so the GameCube sold for 145. It's got uh, 10 games and uh, controller with it, matching controller. All right, the um, GameCube also has a, a single game that was bought, Mario Kart Double Dash and the Joe War. Okay, yep. Right here. That sold for 66. 
All right, we sold some more car mats on two Charlie. I guess it should say truck mat. Right, yeah, we have two sets over here. These are the King Ranch, right? Um, almost certain these are them. We had two on the same shelf, which I shouldn't have done. But, uh, yeah, I guess I'll unwrap those just to lay eyeballs on a King Ranch. Yep. That was. Those are the good ones there. Mhm. Mm Real good. Um, did you mind your Gauntlet Legends in '64? Okay. Gauntlet Legends, got it. That sold for thirty-five. Okay. Yep, there's one in there. That's all for 12. Boy, our carrier's gonna be happy to come here today. <laughs> she knows to expect that. In the flatware drawer, we have a Nintendo gun. <laughs> yeah, I put that in. I figured it would probably sell pretty quick. Oh, flatware. That's all for 13. Okay. C12, we have some spark plugs, bottom nine. CC12 right here. That's what I did with the spark plugs. I just put them in smaller containers all over the place. Mm -hmm. All right. These are, uh, Champion Copper Plus. They're red and black. I think I got them right here. Let's see. RJ12C. That's it. Yep. Yep. Those sell for 16. Okay, let me put these back. And we also have three Mercari orders and we also have two UPS orders for sure. We're gonna pull those in a little bit. Yeah. What we got on Mercari? Um, we have a Clio, she's on um, five Bravo. Okay, got her. She sells for uh, 14. Okay. We have a juice. Okay. Over 11. All right. And then we have a pair of shoes. Um, let me figure out the location for those. And then we have a pair of sandals E1. They sold for 25. And I, I think that's uh, on stuff that's going to go out, like the stuff that's two pounds or more. I've been doing ship your ship on our own. I've been doing ship on our own on uh, Macari, so that is free shipping with yeah, these. Yeah, price included or shipping included. All right. Yeah. All right. Let me go ahead and get this stuff packed, and we have a couple of ups orders. Okay, I'm I'm plodding along, still packing this stuff. Yep, I started on the little small breakable stuff. So, okay, my friends in the UK, I know y'all were yelling at us yesterday. These are not for sugar cubes or whatever. <laughs> they are for egg, co they're egg coddlers. Do you know what egg coddling is, Mommy? I, I prefer, I don't like the newfangled eggs that have to be coddled. I like the old school eggs that are a little tougher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. It is funny. The name kind of suggests how they're cooked. <laughs> so what you do is um, you crack your egg into here, whole. You don't okay. scramble it, whole. Drop it in there and put the lid on. And then you're going to submerge it and uh, boil on water like up to here and cook it. So it's like you double boil your egg. Is that what that is yeah they're like yeah they're cooked they're like cooked inside this kind of like in a little oven that's what's called coddling yeah and then you could just pull it up out by this that's why they have with your pinky do you yeah. have to do the british people use their pinky to do uh, that they might have some special tongs <laughs> I don't know. But that's what these are for okay now i did just also list some of those um those salt and pepper shakers these guys here and um i google images and found the name of them and there's only one sold on Terra Peak and Worth Point. They sold for $68. This is a very popular line of um, dishes and stuff. Um, it's made um, Stonehenge, England. Okay. 
Um, so I, I listed them for 50, <clears throat> just try to move them along, you know. You know, when I first got into, it's funny, when I first got into eBay, uh, just on a, like a hobby seller basis, remember we would go to like... Um, Auctions? Yeah, the country auctions mm -hmm. and stuff, just for fun. Like we both had jobs at that point. Yeah. But um, I remember one thing I do remember is that I would see, I would know even back then I would know to look for like English pottery. Yeah. Like Staffordshire. I would buy like you, you remember the dogs, mm -hmm. like the cocker spaniel dogs. Yeah. Like that kind of stuff. Actually, believe it or not, y'all, I don't know if it still does well or not, but back then it used to do pretty well. There is a lot of fakes out there too, so you have to be careful and know that, to look for. Them. I may have sold some fakes. You might have. That was back in the '90s when that kind of stuff was mm -hmm. still hot, you know. Yeah. Okay, I got all of this stuff packed. These two are going to be ups. I had them parcel at first, but ups is just a better is a better choice for those. And then have all those USPS. We've got two more orders to pull today. Okay, all that stuff is waiting for the carrier. Um, UPS. Good. Yeah, UPS. We still got two more. What do we yeah, got? Yeah, we got two crackers. All right. 12 Delta dash L. It's a Coca Cola. You'll see him. He's a, he's a fan. Alpha Bravo Charlie Delta. Let's see where he is. Must be on the second row. There. I see him. I'm surprised that bear hadn't sold yet. He's so cool. That was your favorite one, huh? Well, I just like how it's just solid wood, real chunky. Yep. This guy's gonna. Does any of this stuff come off? Oh yeah, the this comes off. I think his flag even. The comes bear off. comes off of the. The bear comes off the top of the truck. That's the awesome. The little Coke bottle in there is actually supposed to go up there. This that comes off. Yeah. Okay, there's a Coke bottle in the bag. Yeah. That this, does not. You sure? I don't. Uh, I bet it does. Uh, I don't think so. I don't want to. Okay. I flag mean, like, does. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I can make a, a little, a little box. another box with those contents. I mean, it's. I mean, it turns, so it's not glued. Well, I don't want to. There, it comes off. Okay. Here we go. Yep. Okay. Yeah, we sold him for um, uh, two hundred plus ship. Okay. Nice. And then the other one is on one Alpha. It's Saint Peter Petrus. Uh oh, one Alpha. That's a oh, that's a big boy. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we might have to do it. Where is he? He's on the right over there. It's him there? Yeah. Okay. Okay, don't drop him. He looks very shocked. And he sold for 150 Okay, so some good cracker sales too. Yep. The That's the thing about these crackers. Like, if we're having I think, I, nothing, out. does it? I thought it did. Maybe not. Doesn't feel like it does. Okay. That's one good thing about the the high end nutcrackers is we've had this happen a couple times now where we're having a, a poor sales day or not up to our par sales day, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden we sell a two hundred dollar cracker and it's like okay now we're having a good sales day. Yeah. With one sale. Yeah. <laughs> so we've had that happen a few times now. So really like great sales weekend overall. Like we will uh, we haven't had. Of course a lot of that was the video games yeah but the, some of that was crackers and some i mean it's just a good and then the um the car mats yeah no it's we not just, we just had a lot of good item sales so. yeah we did okay yeah. well let me get these guys packed so candace can get them over to ups all right everything is packed everything is gone candace is going to go make a um walmart pickup pick yeah for groceries anyway so which is right by ups so it's perfect and her and, Mo and she brought molly with her did y'all make it in in one trip? We did. We each carried two and we had four boxes and man, they were packed. None of them were heavy though, the boxes. Oh no, we were able to stack them and carry them in. Yeah. But um, yeah, we had to wait in line and I was telling Lonnie, this one woman, you know, people bring in stuff for them to pack, which is way overcharged. Anyway, this woman comes struggling. She's got a little kid with her about this high, so she couldn't help. She's carrying this big commercial um, cotton candy machine in two parts. She's got like the big dome part in this hand and then this big metal box trying, trying to get in there. And oh I was my like, Lord. what is she going to pay to ship that? It was my huge. Gosh. That I ball was like this big around. I wonder, man, 
I wish I knew more about that story. I, I would I would love to know how much they charged her to pack that. I would have liked to be in line after her to find that out, but she was going to be there a while, I think. Yeah, oh yeah, she would. And man, not only would they have charged her an arm and a leg to pack the stuff, and justifiably so. Yeah, I mean, that... Justifiably so. Yeah. I wouldn't want to pack something like no. that. As a matter of fact, they... It might be cheaper to just buy and order a new one or something. I don't or, know what she what, the, what was going on. Or that might be a freight type situation, based on what yeah, you're saying. Yeah. But not only would they charge her that massive amount for that, every time I've ever seen them quote at the UPS store quote somebody shipping price, it's always like way, way, way higher than we pay through eBay or pirate ship. Yep. So. And it amazed <clears throat> me, like okay okay we walked in there and there was like six people in line ahead of us and then about three or four came in after us and we were the only ones that had stuff ready to go everybody else was just bringing stuff in either amazon returns or stuff that was not packaged to ship so i'm guessing the way they make their money they must the ups store i've always been interested in this i guess they make their money first of all they have the amazon returns returns and that that's their major business and I, who knows how much Maybe they make a buck a return on that or something like yeah. that. Who knows? But then people that come in there to ship stuff, I'm assuming what ha this is how it probably works. They probably get like the best cheapest commercial or one of the cheapest commercial rates you can get just based on UPS store and the volume they do. Right. Right. Kind of comparable to eBay or whatever. Right. Or maybe even cheaper. Yeah. And then they charge the customers full retail rate maybe and then extra for packaging and stuff right yeah. so yeah and then like if you look they have they have bubble wrap it's like in this it's little like, it's like this big around yeah it's 12 inches by about that big around it's 15 dollars. yeah it can't i it, maybe it's 20 feet of bubble wrap i, I don't how know how often they sell that stuff oh know. gosh it's also and like they're, everything there is like crazy crazy expensive there was this one guy also who was um he had some papers he was having overnight and i never thought about ups for that i always thought about like either fedex or um priority overnight you know isn't that weird though like wouldn't you i would expect ups store nobody ever buys those that those supplies that they sell there i've never seen anybody buy them never ever never not once not even look at them <laughs> no so they have that stuff there and then when i go to buy boxes i'm usually going to you know lowe's home depot places like that right and then i'm ordering stuff online whatever why doesn't ups store sell boxes sell packing supplies at prices that make sense to where people would buy yeah, them. Yeah, they have like the cardboard tubes for posters and stuff and they're like outrageous like five and to ten dollars. Right. Yeah. Man, they would they can make a killing if they actually tried to add that sideline. I'm glad they don't because the line's already long enough. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying if I was running a place like that, mm -hmm. I would try and compete with all these other places that people are going yeah. i would sell bubble wrap i would make sure my boxes of bubble wrap were the cheapest you could find anywhere yeah i i would be somebody needs to open a little local store that sells just shipping cheap shipping supplies in bulk kind of there's one in baton rouge isn't that owned isn't that like a ups store or something no oh. no but what they really do all they do is they buy all their stuff from uline and then resell it local yeah that's all that is yeah. but anyways we were talking about that because um i've it's time i know it is time, it is it, time. it's not going to be today no. but we're just talking about it and you know like so, there's some there's some things that we do or that i've carried over from day one that i'm still doing that is it's not efficient it's not efficient it's yeah. dumb and, I, I, and i've known it yeah and that's where i keep the bubble wrap like whenever i pack yeah where do you keep the bubble wrap wherever i can wherever there's an empty spot <laughs> and i like and when i'm working like sometimes i'll throw it in a chair and work and pull it from there or on a bench or wherever i can and i'm tired of it so what we're gonna do we're gonna do it really simple i'm just gonna put um hang a rope or two ropes from up here, some, something. It's gonna be suspended from those two two by fours, so those rafters right there. And it's gonna hang here, it's gonna be on like a 
roll on some PVC pipe or something like that. Yeah, a simple thing, but and, yeah. And we may even do a double decker thing where we have the big bubble and the small bubble because we maybe. I know my only issue with that is it. It might come down too low. Yeah, because of the scale being. Here. I don't use the large bubble enough to where it has to be hung. But I have an idea. What you got? Swap these. Shove this down and put your scale like right here. You think? That would solve the problem. I don't know. You, you know one the one thing I don't like about that? What? I don't like first I don't like that I don't like if the bench is all the way to here. I don't like working right here. Because oh, there's no carpet. Well not just not just that, but there's just not quite as much room. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not I'm probably not gonna do that, but hmm. We might have to do we could get we could move our mini right. works on and do, and do another side one side. i think that would be the way to go and probably put the small bubble here yeah. and then the big bubble here since i use it less often yeah and then i could and then the next thing to tackle after that would be paper and if that's one thing like okay so i am also about to order some more bubble yeah and i pulled this up because this stuff this is America Bubble Boy, of course. There is a link down below. When you click that link to buy your bubble wrap, uh, you do help us and the channel out. This is the one that Joel added not too long ago, the 1050, three 350 foot rolls for $49. That is the best deal in bubble wrap out there. And it's a good size too. Yeah. Because like it's a great order size because it lasts a long time. Mm -hmm. So I, I like. I, I'm so glad he started doing 1050. But uh, what was? Why did Where's I? Where's my paper? Oh, yeah. Next time I talk to Joel, I talk to Joel maybe once a week or so, and I and I'm always telling him, Hey Joel, you need to sell this. Hey Joel, you need to. Sell. He, I'm sure he's sick of hearing. He's probably this. got a list of things, you know, and then we're adding to it. Yeah, but <laughs> one of the things I think that Bubble Boy could sell that would make sense is packing paper. Yeah because like they're all about the void fill yep and you know with the bubble bubble and paper order would make sense because there's so many times i i protect the item or wrap the item with bubble and then i fill. void fill with paper mm -hmm. and yeah okay bubble boy you need to start selling paper i'm gonna tell joel that yeah we usually buy flat packs but probably a roll would be awesome too you could hang that too huh? the only thing about a roll is then you gotta tear it or cut it or whatever i like the flat pack sort of i don't know we recently bought some from amazon how's that working out it's okay yeah it's all right it's not as big as the stuff we used to get i kind of want i yeah i i think i want i would like i would have rather have roll but then i don't know how that would dispense yeah. or so we'll, yeah. we'll tackle that next but this week by the end of the week by the end of the week how many days they give you wednesday thursday Three. friday Ooh, that's tight. We'll do it. Okay. Well, very soon now. I'm not gonna promise when. Very soon we're gonna install this stuff, and we'll uh we'll show y'all all that. Okay, y'all. So I've been working with. We have some sports collectibles that we got from Kevin and Danielle. That that we just bought. Uh, well, we showed it to y'all yesterday. Yeah, this was some of that stuff. Some of that stuff. So this helmet, this little LSU mini helmet. I could. I didn't know who these players were. And Kat, he must have not known either because no. he didn't mention who they were. No. So, figured out this one. I, I know it doesn't look like it necessarily, but that's Alan Fanica, um, who actually is in the NFL Hall of Fame. He got in the NFL Hall of Fame in 2021. And then this other side, I could not figure this out. And the tricky part about this was, this must have been at some signing event or some kind of fan event or something or convention or something mm -hmm. because these two guys did not play on the same team right well, at least not, not in at the same time not in college anyway yeah. when i say same team i mean like yeah. that team you know so you i went to dumb it down for people like me <laughs> i went to tiger droppings which is that's like the number one lsu sports forums or whatever it's pretty rough in there and i put photos up and within a few minutes, they have the Yahoos like we do in the uh, the reseller water cooler. Yes, serious question. Somebody makes like a, a reply, then a ha-ha, like a funny, sarcastic kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Plenty of that in here, too. And then uh, this guy, got. he said, 
Todd Kenshin, he was 49, never mind. So anyway, I looked up Todd Kenshin, Todd Kenshin's autograph, and look, you can tell, Todd, well, it doesn't, it wasn't signed the exact same. But that's his style. But that's his, but T-O-D-D -D with the number sign and then the number, but it's a different number. But but here he put God rules R-U-L-Z. Back then he was doing R-U-L-E-S. He got cooler as time went by. I don't know. <laughs> but, and then when I was trying to figure out like, okay, why was that number different? And actually 81 wasn't what he wore at LSU. He wore 49 at LSU. Who did he play before? I don't know. I had it pulled up. But anyways, Candace figured it out. He played two pro teams and um, 89 was, number 89 was one of those. That's that, what he wore for the Falcons. Yeah, so he signed the LSU helmet with his Falcons number because I guess right. he was playing at that time for them when he signed it. Yep. And so yeah, I got a Hall, NFL Hall of Famer on here and I've got Kenshin was a popular player for LSU, mm -hmm. not not NFL. Now the another one we have, and this one, <laughs> I there are actual repops of this all over eBay of photos like this with Maris and Mantle. Yeah. What do y'all do with this? I have a feeling it might not be a pop a repop just because it's not signed by both of them. I, yeah, but then it's not wor worth enough to do a COA, you know? Yeah, for us to get this authenticated, like this, Candace found a similar photo for how much on eBay? Like 125 With the authentication. Yeah, we're authenticated, so I mean... So I don't, I don't want to send it in for that little bit, like... like and, uh, can we, we can't sell it because we don't know if it's a lot. And then what if we spend the money for the authentication and it doesn't come back? So I guess we'll just hang it on the wall. Well, maybe I'll put it. Should I put it over here with my Jordan auto here? <laughs> <laughs> that Jordan and Mantle. <laughs> we don't know what to do with this thing. But what would y'all? Or would y'all just throw it up on eBay and sit and just say, "Hey, look, not sure. Bought this in a collection. You want to buy it or not?" Yeah. What do you? What do y'all do with this? It's on kind of a hard stock. Like, yeah, card stock. Card stock, hard stock. <laughs> I said hard stock. I'm wrong. Hard paper, card stock. But y'all can see it's not like floppy and it's not even photo paper. Yeah, so this is probably from some signing event, I'm guessing. I think so too. I think it probably was. I think it's legitimate just kind of looking at the coloring in it and stuff, but. The fact that it's not signed by Roger Maris adds to the legit legitimacy for me. Yeah, yeah. But it's also possible that. There's a billion of his signature on well, the photo. Maris might have been dead, Mantle's still alive, and I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. All right, but that's going to be it for this one. Thanks a bunch for watching. And yeah, if you have any advice on that, what would you do with that? Because well, when I get in these kind of spots, a lot of times I just get confused and I don't know where to go with it. Yep. So what would y'all do with that? But that's going to be it for this one. Thanks a bunch for watching, and we will see y'all again very soon. Bye, y'all. Bye.